This session has been designed for people looking to create the barcode symbol for their retail items that will be scanned through point of sale. Prior to completing this session, your products will have a G10, a global trade item number assigned. Please note that GS1 Canada does not provide barcode images. However, we can provide you with solution provider who can do this for you. Why does barcode quality matter? One retail chain estimates spending $4 million annually on excess labor for products that do not scan on the first pass. That's up to one half ton less weight in eight hour cashier shift. Barcode quality is extremely important. The goal is to ensure your product scans the first time and every time. When a barcode does not scan the first time, it increases the handling cost in the region of multi of million dollars in labor costs. For the individual checkout operator, it can amount to a half a ton of additional products handled over the course of an eight hour shift. And for your customer, they're expecting a speedy experience through the checkout. Customer likes to ensure that they have a complete shop. Quite frequently, items are dropped at the checkout when they don't have properly scanned. Trust, customers need to have, know that the product is scanned, the correct information is being retrieved. The goal is to ensure your barcode scans the first time and every time. We have learned that the first step in creating a barcode is to ensure that there is a global trade item number for each individual product. This GTIN is then encoded into a barcode symbol, which can then be read by a barcode scanning machine. When that has been read, behind the scenes, a computer decodes that symbol in order to get the GTIN which act as a key to retrieve information about that products from a database. There are different types of barcodes available for your use depending on the type of environment they're going to be used in, the type of data you want to carry, and the type of GTINs you have assigned to your product. In North America, we most frequently use the GTIN 12. And for the GTIN 12, you would use the UPCA barcode. For items that have smaller amounts of packing, for example, cosmetics and gum, you could also use a UPCE for a G1012. Please contact GS1 Canada to learn more about this option. If your product has a G1013 and is used globally, then type the barcode you would use to be an EAN13. If you want to condense the information or condense your barcode into a smaller space of your packaging, then you could use the GS1 data bar, which encodes both the GTIN 12 and the GTIN 13. In addition to the GTIN, it is possible to encode even more information into your barcode. For example, the best before date, the lot number, quantity or weight. Each of these are known as application identifiers and are shown as numbers in brackets underneath the barcode symbol. These types of barcodes are most frequently used on fresh produce and coupons, for example. There are two main types. The GS1 data bar expanded, which is a linear symbol, and there is the GS1 data bar expanded stacked that can be used when there is less space on your packaging. The purpose of a barcode is to carry information about a product and so the first step in creating a barcode is to ensure that the GTIN, the number underneath the barcode, is absolutely accurate. There are global standards in place that govern the size, color, and location of barcodes. You can click this link here to access those detailed specifications. You can see that in the barcode there are several different elements. There's the GTIN underneath the barcode, the numbers, there's the quiet zone to the left and right of the barcodes, which will be discussed in more details. Then there are guard bars at the end and in the middle of the barcode that help the scanner to read the barcode. Global standards are in place to ensure that barcodes scan reliably the first time every time to prevent errors, reduce costs, and save time. There are standards around the size of your barcode the X dimension, which is the narrowest part of your barcode at 100% magnification must be 0.33 millimeter. This barcode can be shown between 80% to 200% magnification. 
it is critically important that the barcode is not truncated or the height is not reduced. If that happens, you can see that the omnidirectional red laser light of the scanner will not be able to read the majority of the barcode. It is also important to ensure that your barcode is free from additional graphics, design elements, and labels to ensure it can be read easily. The global standard for quiet zone is the area to the left and right of the barcode must be free from obstructions, shown here by the green bars. These standards ensure that the scanner can read where the barcode starts and ends. It helps to prevent scanning difficulties. In this example, there is no quiet zone because of the red background color and the red packaging color. There are global standards in place that impact the color of your barcode. It's important to remember that scanners use red laser lights to read your barcodes and those red laser lights cannot read red, orange, yellow, or brown colors. It's important to select a dark barcode color on a light background color. Know that when barcodes do not meet global standard retailers may seek to recover costs, refuse the product, or require packaging be reprinted and applied at the manufacturer's expense. The location of your barcode on your product packaging has a big impact on the speed, efficiency, and effectiveness of scanning at the retail point of sale. In general, the global standards require that there is at least one barcode in the lower right corner on the back of the product at least 8 mm from the seam. This may vary depending on your packaging. Remember that tight curves, seams, staples, perforation, seals, overlapping materials, and other design elements can infringe your barcode and make it difficult to scan. A barcode can be oriented in one of two ways. Ladder style, which is the vertical fashion and that is useful mythology for curved surfaces. For large items that are very heavy or bulky, it may be necessary to place two barcodes on the product packaging on the front and the back and in an opposite quadrant. In this instance, we're demonstrating the picket fence orientation or the horizontal orientation. If your product has no packaging, then it may be necessary to include the barcode on tags or stickers. It's very important that your barcode meets global standard in order to avoid issues at point of sale. The most common types of issues are the following. Distortion, which is from printing on film or shrink wrap. Smudged ink, which is a result of inferior printing quality. Using semi-transparent substrates, which is poor choice because the background is not scannable. An obstruction, this barcode is less than 8 mm from the packaging seal. GS1 Canada does not provide barcode images or printing services. You can access solution providers for printing barcode symbols on the link provided. Provide your printer with the GTIN and the types of barcode symbols to use. Usually, it's a UPCA for GTIN 12. Some of the quality recommendations are the following. Please ensure your packaging designer and printer know GS1 barcode and numbering specification. Barcodes can be printed on the packaging or on labels. It's important to test the quality and code behavior at the design stage process. Please choose printing substrates that avoid smudged ink and distortion of barcodes. And also ensure the barcode has crisp, clear lines so it can scan easily and without any problem. You will need to obtain the GS1 Canada Scan Verification Certificate. That would ensure the quality of your barcode meets global, ISO, and ANSI standards. It's important that your barcode scans the first time and every time. GS1 Canada Scan Verification Service tests 10 different quality factors, which include visual verification, and technical analyzers. During the verification, you will see the verification report that confirms your barcode meets standards, a performance grade, and if your barcode fails to meet the standard, you'll be given information on the change required to meet the global standards. This module now has covered the different barcodes available for use in a retail environment. 
It has also covered the different global standards that must be achieved when creating barcode, as well as the steps that are taken to create quality barcodes. The next session will cover on how to create the numbers and the barcodes for logistic items used in a warehouse or distribution center.